So anyway, like usual, you guys like to write in. You like to say what's going on. You, you know, you ask me for advice. Oh, what? Oh, I haven't, I haven't played that in a long fucking time. Remember that song, the advice jingle? Anybody? Oh, why isn't it playing? Do I have the sound down? What do I got to do? Why well, I clicked on the advice. It's time Yay. advice. Hey. Your host, Billy That's me. And I'm ripping off this melody from somebody somebody else. else. All right. It is time, man. It is fucking time when you guys write in. You know, I'm trying to, you know, trying to help you out here. You know, something that I wish this younger generation would do more of. I got to tell you, as an old fart fucking comedian, it breaks my heart seeing fucking stand-up comics going after other stand-up comics on social media. For the love of God, can you guys get each other's phone numbers and work it out? You're both comedians. You're on the same fucking team. What are we doing? There's enough people coming at comedians. We don't need to be coming at each other. Kills me. Ah, these kids today. These kids today. What are they doing? Um, All right. British Spelling. Dear Yankee Dum Dum Nuts. Oh, Jesus Christ. Come on with the ins. Dum Dum Nuts? All right. You corrected a fan for spelling favorite with an O-U as in F-A-V-O-U-R-I-T-E. That's the way it's, it's, that's the way it's spelled. It, that's the way they spell it there. Sorry. Also, color, C-O-L-O-U-R is spelled that way. If you don't believe me, type it into a Word doc and watch it not, all capitals, correct your spelling. Listen, buddy. Okay, I'm American. All right? We don't give a fuck how you spell it. All right? This is how it works. You adjust to us, not the other way around. You know it. You know it's true. As much as you guys say you hate us, you can't stop paying attention to us. No one knows the name of your leader. Nobody gives a fuck. I'm sure you have the Oscars and the Grammys over there, your versions of it, and nobody cares. They want to win the one that's here. All right? I, if we don't give a shit about the world sport, do you think I give a fuck about how you spell favorite? Why don't you call something else brilliant that isn't really brilliant? <laughs> no, fuck with you. I, did, I had no idea. I didn't know that that's how they spell. I know, you know, I know how the Canadians spell Canadians. I-E-N-S as opposed to I-A-N-S because I give a fuck about hockey. I'm sorry. You know, I barely know how to spell it over this way. Sorry, I'm not a wordsmith. All right. I'm, you know, I know that you guys are over there, you know. You're living over there in England, you know? Look, look at you guys. Look at all you have to be proud of. Almost winning that soccer championship, beating up the fans, defenseless fans, five-on-one fights, beating them up, kicking them in the head before the fucking game. You have the nerve to call us a bunch of fat animals. You know, maybe if you got a little fatter like an American, you wouldn't have enough cardio to boot the guy in the head for the sixth fucking time. You'd be a little winded after the first one. All right, sorry, I didn't mean any of that. Did I mention I'm drinking a smoothie while I do that? I'm drinking a smoothie and I'm in my bare feet. You know, L.A. didn't get rid of my East Coast edge. Um, All right, well, thank you for the spelling lesson. You should probably give me reading out loud lessons first before you try to correct or let me know how the world spells favorite. Um, All right, unwanted pussy solution. Hey, Billy Bitch Tits. (laughs) I don't know why that's so funny. Bitch tits is just hilarious. And then you get the alliteration in there. Billy bitch tits. You know what I sound like right now? I sound like one of those guys on the food show. You know, where they break down the food. Oh, so you got the savory and then you got the sugary and then it comes back to a savory fucking. You get what you fucking do? Okay, so you're putting the onions in there and then you're going to caramelize it. All right. Wait, you're putting ice cream on that? Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. This is, del- this is delicious. Um. That's what he just did with Billy Bitch Tits. All right. I was listening to your podcast where you mentioned the unwanted cat in your driveway. Uh, 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 my wife doesn't want it there. I love that fucking cat. Kind of ironic that you're looking to chase pussy away when you couldn't get it 
get any for years. But I guess this is different. Oh, Jesus. Well, the old badump bump there. Buddy, you didn't even listen. You were so focused on your fucking joke. I guess I said in the end I was worried that it was going to, you know, we had, you know, we had birds, this mother bird, you know, not in a relationship, got knocked up, you know, she's a fucking horse, right? And she had her kids in the, uh, in the potted plant, you know, father wasn't around, absentee father, it's terrible. And uh, but that was the only time I didn't like the cat because I was like, if that thing goes up there and kills those little birds in front of my daughter, they just see like a couple of bird heads there. Like they'll really be traumatic. But I love the cat. Okay. So with your little, did you see what I did there? Um, any, anyhow, what you need is a lion, is lion shit. Serious. Nature reserves and zoos sell it for this exact purpose. The cat smells it, recognize it. Oh, lion. I thought you meant you need some lion shit, motherfucker. You meant literally lion shit. The cat smells it, recognizes it as a superior species, and finds some other poor schmuck's driveway to shit in. Dude, how big is a lion shit? I mean, that's going to be fucking, that's like a year's worth of cat shit. Why would I do that? I bought some, <laughs> hey, this lion took a dump. You want to stick it in your driveway? First of all, how does a fucking domesticated cat from the United States of America know what the the apex predator's shit smells like in Africa? Is he going on travel.com on the fucking weekends? I bought some from a safari park here in the UK and it worked on my neighbor's cat doing the same thing on my lawn. Are you serious? Love the podcast. Stay off the donuts. Fuck the Patriots. Go Steelers. Well, I can see why you say fuck the Patriots if you're a Steeler fan. But, you know, we're, we're, you know, Tom Brady left us. So I don't know where we are now. So I imagine you can finally beat us. But you know what? You'll always have to sit there and realize that you never beat the New England Patriots in a significant game when Tom Brady was here. You know, like I didn't take, you know, pleasure in when the Patriots beating the Steelers when Terry Bradshaw wasn't there. It felt good when Ben Roethlisberger showed up, though. Because Ben is a man. Ben is a man. He rides a motorcycle without a helmet. God damn it. Um, all right. Let's look up lion dung for sale. God. This stuff. Oh, my God. Get the fuck out of here. Predator pee. Mountain lion urine. Now, does this do the same? Amazon sells mountain lion piss. I mean, Jesus, how many fucking people are they trying to put out of business? Can of tiger poo. Oh, my God. Ah. That almost makes me gag. Can you imagine working at that fucking... I mean, it's like a dumb shit joke, but seriously. Oh, my God. Gross. I guarantee you human shit still smells worse. I mean, Patrice used to joke about that. How human shit, every other shit was funny. If you stepped in cow shit, you step in dog shit, horse shit, all of it, bird shit, all of it is funny. But the rankest, most nastiest shit out there is human shit. Uh, love it so much. Okay, this is the review, Tiger Poo. Love it so much, funny and kitschy addition to my dining room. Oh, so this is, okay, this is, this is a joke. Oh, okay. Love it. It was a huge hit. Put it on top of my fridge as a conversation piece. Boy, is it. Okay, so it's a joke. Okay, I was going to say, my God, it's just pictured somebody with a giant, like, you know, like an oar that you row a boat with, just stirring fucking tiger shit. Predator P. All right, shop cat deterrent. All right, homemade repellent. They're like, is this what you're looking for? Do you realize I looked up lion shit and then like, all right, buddy, why don't you just get these fucking things here? Uh, no, no, no. Let's get back to fucking mountain lion sh- piss. Mountain lion urine. You can buy it on Amazon. Predator P. Uh, well, wait a minute. There's a mountain lion in my fucking neighborhood. Now, what if I spray this shit? 
and I go from a, a small cat I can deal with to a bigger fucking cat. I can't go mountain lion pee. This mountain lion thinks he has a chance. I got to go. I got to go lion pee, right? Mountain lion urine. Territorial marking scent creates illusion that a mountain lion is nearby. Reduced. Okay, let's let's see. Does mountain lion urine attract mountain lions? Here we go. It's right there. Somebody uh, by liberally marking an area with mountain lion pee, you duplicate the territorial marking habits of mountain lions in the wire. This illusion triggers an instinctive response in prey. If mountain lion scent is around, these animals want to be far away. But what about mountain lions? What about mountain lions? Oh, Jesus Christ. Look at this fucking rabbit hole you assholes sent me down. Does mountain lion, yeah. Does it attract other fucking mountain lions? Predator odors attract other predators. Yeah, see, look at me. Openly common sense here. Predator orders attract other predators, creating an olfactory web of information. Many studies have reported the aversive reactions of prey towards a predator's odor. Uh, urine, a behavior widely thought to reduce the ri- risk of predation by the predator. However, because odor signals persist in the environment, They are vulnerable to exploitation and eavesdropping by predators, prey, and conspecifics. I have no idea what I'm reading right now. As such, scent patches created by one species might attract another species interested in information about their enemies. We study this. You know what? You know what? This is is classic white people shit. Where I'm going to create an... I'm going to solve a small problem by creating an, an, an even bigger problem. And a very brilliant person said to me one time, said human beings are the only people that don't adapt to nature. They try to make nature adapt to them. And we start fucking with the matrix. I'm not fucking with the matrix. Okay? I can deal with the house cat. I'm not fucking, fucking taking lion shit. First of all, I couldn't even find it. Let me look it up again. Because I know the person who said, well, I didn't say mountain lion pee. I said lion shit. Lion poo poop for sale. You can get it in the UK. Oh, God, you guys are fucking cultured out there, aren't you? All right. The only true socially big cat. Lion poo for sale. You can't buy this shit. Watch German Circus sells giant... Sells jars of lion poop for gardening. At least they're recycling. Does lion poo really keep cats away? Here we go. Here we go. All right. If you have a beautiful garden that you're proud of, you probably spend a lot of time in that garden. In fact, you probably spend most of the weekends. What the fuck are we talking about your garden for? Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. All that being said, there are also times when gardening can be, get stressful. This is especially true if you are battling cats or other small animals. I didn't know cats fucked up gardens. These mammals not only like to get into the garden and eat your plants and flowers, but they like to leave you little presents everywhere in, in the form of scat. See that? I think there's a reason why cat is in the word scat. Um, now, one might think that animal scat is good, a good fertilizer, but that isn't the case at all. In fact, it might. Well, then now you're talking about a garden. Lion poo. The first thing you know is that lion dung is solid. Online is so, so, is solid. <laughs> lion dung is sold online in pellets. And there are a number of individuals that have boasted about this product. Everything it has to offer. Why lion poo might work. Why lion poo might not work. You know what, dude? This is too early in the process. I'm not going to be a guinea pig and fucking have some lion poo or some goddamn bear urine. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, I open the door, you know, and whatever that I sprayed out there, you know, somebody's looking for a suitor. It's not happening. Okay. Not my world. All right. You can take your fucking lion poo. You can send it right back to the fucking jungle you found it in because I ain't going to buy it. 
All right, childhood snack. Hey, dear Billy Bottom Bitch Burr, I have a question for you that goes back to the days where you were not allowed to touch the thermostat. But before I ask the question, I have a story on why I am so interested. Uh, My dad told me a story about one of his favorite childhood snacks. It was something called a wish sandwich. They wrote a whole song about that. You wish you had some meat. Bow, 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 bow. Mm. Okay, the ingredients to the wish sandwich are two slices of bread, mustard, and you wishing that there was meat and cheese to go along with it. My dad's family grew up very poor, and this would be all that they would eat for a meal at rough times. Yes, the condiment sandwich. The worst of meals being crackers and ketchup. They still laugh about it every now and then. Uh, And then they have a wish sandwich to remember their childhood. So I got in the habit of asking people their favorite childhood snack or meal. Would you be surprised by some... You would be surprised by some people's answers. So I thought I would ask a fatty like yourself, what was your favorite childhood snack or meal? Thanks and go fuck yourself. Um... My favorite childhood snack. Ah, dude, everything. Everything. I've already talked to you about steakums. That's when I felt like I was becoming an adult. When I would come home and I would make myself a steakum. Which was paper thin beef from some sort of animal. That was like frozen and then you'd put it in the pan. And when it became like see-through and brown, you'd flip it over. Then you put a little cheese on top. And then you stick it on some white bread and try to eat it before all the grease made it all soaking wet bread. There was those I like as far as like junk food goes. I like Fritos. Still my all-time favorite chip is a Frito. Uh, I never made the leap to Doritos. I just don't like them. The original, the winter winter green, whatever they got, every fucking flavor. Doritos, ice. Zima's Doritos. I don't like any of them. I like Fritos. I used to like Bugles. Um, I don't know if I'd be into those too much now, but I I I, I like Doritos. Uh, as far as cookies go, all right. I like Oreo cookies. I do like double stuff. I like the blonde Oreos. I really like Oreos. Uh. And uh, everything else, I don't know. Everything else can go fuck itself as far as cookies go. Unless you just make like a homemade one. But like, I don't eat that shit right now. I got to wait till I get in shape again. So then I become a fat fuck again when I eat all of that crap. Um, Let's see, what else? I liked um, cereal. Back in the day. I liked booberry. I liked Count Chocula. Even though I'm a ginger, I still didn't like Frankenberry. I liked uh, shredded wheat with like a pound of sugar on it. Um, I liked cornflakes, raisin bran, Cheerios. And then when I became an adult, if I was going to treat myself to a cereal that I shouldn't be eating, it was cinnamon life. And then as far as like those fucking baked like cake pre-caked fucking things. Uh, Twinkies can go fuck themselves. Devil dogs can go fuck themselves. Uh, Twinkies because they don't taste like anything. Devil dogs because they're fucking as dry as anything I've ever had in my fucking life. Um, Hostess cupcakes weren't that bad. I like those. They, They at least weren't dry. But I wasn't into yodels or any of that shit. I didn't like a lot of the cakes, man. Um, but as far as like growing up, you know, you know, we, we had money, then we didn't have money, then we had a little money. And then I moved out. So like we sort of always were like chip beef on toast, chicken a la king, uh, Hungarian goulash. We ate all of that shit. Pork chops. Occasionally, cube steaks, as you guys know. You know, the fucking 70s meat. That wasn't even considered fucking poor food. It was just, you know, (laughs) I told you. Until I hung out with black people, I thought macaroni and cheese was a fucking main dish. That's what we, we ate it as a main dish. 
like we were having pasta. My mother would fucking take out like, you know, four little, those little fucking TV dinner crates of them, heat them up in the oven. And then you'd peel off the top and then you just heat them up in the oven and then you just throw it in a bowl and everybody would eat them. We'd have it with toast and it was delicious. Um, all right. Animosity towards my fiance. Oh boy. Oh boy. Here we go. Here comes somebody maybe needs to pull the plug there. First off, let's sit, set things straight here, all right? You are a funny motherfucker. I fucks with you. Uh, I fucks with you tough. You are the funniest comedian out there. I like this person. Nothing but compliments. Not holding me accountable for my actions. Nothing but, you know, praise. Now let me get off your nuts because I know people tell you this shit all the time. Um doesn't mean I don't like to hear it, so thank you. I have, a, I have a life story to tell you about. Let's see how this goes. I've been with my girl now since November 2018. You're a pilot. Do the math. All right. Well, it's two and a half years. I mean, I don't think that has anything to do with flying a plane. Uh, rewinded September 1st, 2018. My father passed away. Sorry to hear that. I'm a wreck. My girl at the time who I was with for six years, who I adored, loved, never cheated on, treated her like the fucking queen I thought she was, leaves me a month after my dad dies. Oh, dude, that means she wanted to dump you before, and then she was just like, fuck, his dad died. Now I got to hang around for another month. God damn it. Uh, it was a blessing in disguise because she was one of those girls that liked, that liked to hit. Oh, yeah. My wife used to be like that. She used to fucking throw shit and punch me. This lunatic. She used to call it, I'm passionate. Uh, she was a narcissist, controlling as hell. Also found out she cheated on me. Oh, Jesus, you fucking dodged a bullet there, sir. So now I'm a double wreck, feeling lost and heartbroken at this point. Hey, I have feelings, fucker. This is typical guys. Like, he, I'm feeling heartbroken. He couldn't just say that. He had, to, he had to throw a fuck you across the bow to keep me at bay here. Uh, not even a week later, this amazing woman, amazing, all capital letters, woman just falls into my lap. So what do I do? Uh, after all the yeah, yeah, bullshit, what does she do? I tell her I'm not ready for a relationship. I tell her that she's a good woman and she doesn't deserve how I'm going to treat her. Parentheses like shit. I told her I know how I am and I don't want to treat her horribly just because my last relationship ended so wrong. Well, that was a mature thing. To know about yourself. Uh, I wasn't ready. You know, the dust must settle and the debris must be thrown out from the wreckage of the last relationship. Yes. Uh, my girl now insisted on staying with me to help me go. No, oh, my girl now, this woman, same person, insisted on staying with me to help me go through my tough time. I didn't want her to. I wanted to be myself. Constantly trying to push her away. I wanted time to focus on me. That didn't happen. Valentine's Day came around. I tried to break up with her that night. But when I told her we couldn't see one another, the waterworks came and I gave in to the tears and she got her way. Now, fast forward about a year. We have a beautiful baby girl together. Oh, my goodness. January 25th, 2020. Congratulations. I hope. Uh, we're a family, as we should be. We plan on getting married in September 2021. Where is the problem? Uh, I feel animosity towards my fiance for never giving me the chance to breathe. I haven't been able to mentally place myself into this relationship. I feel like I used all my good energy on the wrong person in my last relationship. Now we're, now we're getting married with a little girl and I still feel the same. It's not fair for such an amazing woman like her to be with a damaged man like myself. I want to get back to normal and be able to mentally check into this relationship finally. I'm questioning getting married right now. I'm so confused and still feel lost. Any advice would be wonderful. Go fuck yourself. Um, all right. Um, I don't think you're holding yourself accountable for your actions here. All right. You knew from day one you didn't want to be with this woman and you needed your space. All right. And you keep blaming her like she pulled you in, like you didn't have the power to say no. You broke up with her on the evening of Valentine's Day. All right? She starts crying, and rather than sticking to your guns, you stayed into it. And now you have a kid with her. So what I would do if I was you is stop blaming her and feeling resentment towards her. You should actually be questioning 
what is wrong with you that you didn't want to be in something, you got into it, and now you're, you have a kid and you're going to get married. You need to go to therapy is what I would do. I would go to therapy and be like, hey, tell her what him or her you're talking to, what you just did, and try to figure out why you do that stuff rather than blaming this woman who you say is an amazing woman who, you know, you have a kid with. Um, but to give you something positive here, you know, in case you think I'm coming down on you, um, this is a part of life. A part of life is blaming other people for decisions that you made until one day you hold yourself accountable of like, what am I contributing to this situation? You know, why? what happened to me that made me, when a woman cried, give in? And most guys do give in when that happens. Um, I've done both. And I'll tell you, it never works out either way. <laughs> I've called him on. Really? You're going to cry about this? How old are you? That, that never ends well. You're so cold. Uh, pregnant woman's rights. Dear Billy Vanilli, ice cream sandwich, love and burr. Oh, guilty is fucking charged. Vanilli ice cream. Billy Vanilli ice cream sandwich, love and burr. I like that one. I recently saw a visibly pregnant woman smoking. Hey, man, it's, it's her kid. I couldn't believe with all the information we know about tobacco that this still occurs. So I made a post about it on Facebook talking about how if we can smash a window to get a dog out of a car, why can't we smack the cigarette out of a pregnant woman's mouth? That's fucking hilarious. Oddly, this didn't go well. I know you're being sarcastic. And became a discussion about women's rights to her anatomy. I am pro-choice, but smoking while pregnant should be regarded as child abuse. What are your thoughts on this liberals gone wild moment? I uh, hope you were having a great go fuck yourself. Whatever that means. Um, well, yeah, dude, if you post something like that on the Internet, you think some fucking morons aren't going to jump on the hook and start yelling at you. I think it was a, I think it's a great joke. That's what I think. I think it's a really good joke. And I think you should continue doing jokes like that because I think it's funny. And um I can tell you right now, if men carried the baby and we smoked, a woman would have every right to slap it out of our mouths. That's my baby, too. And they would do it. And you know what? They'd be right. They'd be right. Okay? She's making decisions for someone who doesn't have the ability to make a decision. An unborn child. I mean, Jesus Christ. How do you, you, you know? But as I've learned... Throughout the years that the they, women are, when you're in a relationship and then you're married and there's a kid and everything, they are number one. They are the starting quarterback. It's them, then the kids, then, you know, whatever the fuck's going on in the house and then you. That's how it fucking works. That's how the pyramid is built. So it doesn't surprise me that a small number of psycho women are arguing that, but I don't believe that most women feel that. And I don't think that people really think you want to go up and slap it out of her mouth. Um, what you should do is get a spray bottle of water and put it on the, the most widest, like, you know, so it hits her in the face too. Oh, what are we doing? Put that out. There's a baby in there. You're welcome. (laughs) Skip away. And you, you just do it with water. You know, water is all natural. Most people are dehydrated. So it's like, and smoking makes you dehydrated. So there you go, right there. Look what I did. See what I did? I saved your baby and hydrated your breastises. How could you be that mad at me? I moisturized your face while, you know, helping, helping your unborn baby. Like, what could be the problem? Who knows? All right, that is the podcast, everybody. I'm going to go watch the uh, Red Sox just started playing the devil race. I'm going to record that. I'm going to actually go swimming with my kid. That's what I told her I was going to do, and I have to do it um, because, uh, you know, eventually they're not going to want to do it. That's why, you know, eventually they're going to get, like right now she has a tablet, and that fucking thing is just like, it's really cutting into daddy-daughter time, so... We got to like, 
you know, dude, you get your kid like any sort of computer or a phone or anything like that. It's like giving a crackhead crack. You immediately have a problem. All of a sudden, you can't get them to answer your questions, look at you or anything like that. So I got to make sure I put in the quality time. So that is it, everybody. Um, Thank you to everybody that bought tickets to the Wayne Previty uh, benefit slash um, memorial slash uh, reunion. I'm very excited to get back there um, and eat all that delicious food. So I'm going to keep going on the elliptical, elliptical burr. Um, I'm also, you know, lifting the weights, dead, throwing them around. I did the old legs and eggs today. My favorite thing to do. Fucking leg room, dude. I'll tell you, man, the word is out about legs. The leg room, the last couple of times I've gone in there has been packed. Usually the loneliest part of the room is the fucking squat rack and all of that shit. But lately people have been in there. They're not like the guys I remember back in the day. A squat rack was something to hang your fucking, your fucking champion hoodie on as you benched for the ninth day in the fucking row. All right, that's it, everybody. Go fuck yourselves. I'll check in on you on Thursday.